So if you're a programmer, you'd know that unless you're a 200 IQ genius, having an internet connection is a necessity. As soon as any coder runs into a problem, the first thing they do is go to the internet and try and find a solution. That's exactly why today, I'll be trying to program a game in Unity without any internet connection, and to make this a little more interesting, I only have three hours to do it. The first thing I'm going to do is turn off my internet. No internet. Then I'm going to open up the Unity editor, and I'm going to call it No Internet Game. Alright. Alright, and I've started a time. I don't know why we've already got errors, that's kind of weird. Alright, first thing I'm going to do is make the maze. I'm thinking for my game idea, it's a, like a maze with coins in it, and your player goes around and collects them. And there's a time limit, so if you don't collect them in, I don't know, say a minute, you lose. That's my game idea. I think that might be a bit too big. Now, obviously my game is going to need a texture. So I drew up a quick grass texture in Microsoft Paint. Alright, that looks good enough. There we go, it looks good enough. Uh, let's have a look at it. Uh, yeah, looks good enough for what we're doing. So I went around placing the outer walls of the maze, but then I realized that I wanted the maze walls to actually have a texture. Alright, same size, but this time I'm going to make a brick texture, I think. Making the texture was a little difficult because I had to make sure it was seamless, which basically means that if you place two of the same texture next to each other, it doesn't look weird. I feel like it's too easy to navigate right now. I'm going to make it a little bit more complicated. There we go. Okay, that's our maze. Looks pretty complicated. Then I began working on the player. I added a beam for the player to control and attached a camera to it. Alrighty, so first thing I'm going to do is program in some movement. Programming something as simple as movement was a challenge without the internet, but I managed to get something working pretty quickly. See if it does anything now. Yes, okay. That might have looked really crazy, but what I just did was I managed to get the player to move on my own without the internet, which is a pretty big milestone. I kept working on the movement code, but I ran into some issues pretty quickly. That's basically a game we got there, you can navigate them. Oh, why are we turning? Um, I kept having to try and remember how to write certain lines of code that I'd normally just be able to look up. How do you get the mouse? Oh, it's mouse X. Yep, okay, I remember now. Um, mouse X. It wasn't too long into this challenge when I ran into some serious issues regarding the camera movement. Neat, we are literally moving in the wrong direction for some odd reason. Oh, I know why. I know why. Wait, do I know why? <laughs> no, I don't. Um, I'm pretty sure what's happening here is the camera is rotating like more than it's supposed to. Yeah, this one stumped me for a while. I genuinely could not figure out why the camera was moving more than the player was. It just made no sense to me, especially with no internet. Oh, wait, I, I think I know how to fix this. Oh, yeah, that's not what I want. Why on earth is it doing that? Like, what is it trying to accomplish here? I'm so confused. This problem almost drove me insane, and I was only a few minutes into the challenge. It was not going well so far. There's no reason for it to be doing this at all. Like, why? Why is it doing this? I can't believe I actually have to think about this. This is like the dumbest thing to get stuck on. Um, look, I turn it 90 degrees, now it's going backwards. It should not be going backwards, it should be going forward. Basically, the issue here was that the player and the camera weren't turning in sync, so if the player turned 180 degrees, the camera would only turn 90 degrees, which leads to all sorts of issues, and it's obviously a problem. Thankfully, I finally got it working, but I was already an hour into the challenge, so I wanted to move on to other stuff. You know what? Yeah, good enough. We can move around the map. So I began work on the UI. All I had was a simple timer and a score, because that's all I need for this game. Then I started working on a win and lose screen. I made a win screen and then just copy and pasted it for a lose screen, since it's basically the same thing. We should probably program in like win and lose conditions now. Um, so the first thing I'm gonna do is... I don't know what this thing does. First thing I'm gonna do is make it so there's a UI script. And when the timer reaches zero, you get sent to the lose screen. UI script. I began work on a simple script that shows a timer in the top right corner. And if that timer reaches zero, you get sent to the lose screen. Cool, yeah, that's a timer, nice. Now I'm gonna make it so that if, you, if it reaches zero, um, you die. That's better. Then I modeled a simple point in Blender for the player to pick up around the map. God, I just realized I'm going to on collision enter and I, uh, I barely know how to do that. I realized that to get the coin to detect when the player had touched it, I needed to use something called on collision enter. Unfortunately, it was a little difficult remembering how to use this without the internet, but I managed to get something working pretty quickly. Alright, hopefully it works. Nice! Okay, it works. Nice. Hey, now I'm going to try and add five coins hidden around the map. It works! That's so cool! At this point, I was basically finished with the challenge, and I still had an hour and a half left, so I spent that time working on small improvements to the game. Alright, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make uh, the coins actually hidden. 
I tried playtesting the game to see how it was, but the time limit was way too short, and it was basically impossible to beat. Yeah, I lost. First thing I'm gonna do is try and fix that lighting, because it really annoys me. I hate it. For some reason in Unity, when I reloaded a scene while still in the game, the lighting was all weird and the shadows were way too dark, so I tried fixing it. I know there's a way to fix this, I just genuinely forgot. Rendering! Lighting! Here we go. Yes, here we go. Um, I remember now. Oh, I remember how to do this now. Yes, okay, that's great. The lighting isn't buggy now. Alright, the second thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make it so you have a bit longer. Give them 120 seconds. Things were going really well. I'd finished the base game and I'd fixed the lighting glitch and now I had basically an hour and a half to add whatever I wanted. Anyway, may as well make the main menu screen. That'd be cool. So to make the main menu screen, I just duplicated the windscreen and then changed some of the text around, since the main menu screen isn't going to be that detailed anyway, and I already have half the code written for it. I'm going to call the game Coin Maze, because that's basically what it is. It's a maze of coins. As you can see here, I've just began work on the menu, and I'm adding things like a quit button and a play button. You know, things that game menus have. Yeah, I'm going to add some credits. I made it, it's my game, I'm going to add credits to it. I added a credits section to the menu because I thought it would look cool, and at this point of a challenge, I wasn't really sure what else to add. Yeah, I'm not sure if it actually works or not, but whatever. Alright, you know what? I'm gonna try and beat the game. I think I can. Unfortunately, I didn't manage to beat the game this time, but I tried again and actually managed to beat it. Nice, and it tells you your actual score. That's, yeah, it works. Nice. Oh yeah, I also added a feature in where it tells you your time on the windscreen. At this point, the challenge was basically over. I mean, I only had about half an hour left to add things, so I just made small bug fixes, which aren't too interesting. Yeah, now our high score's updated. Cool. Hey, that looks good. I'm keeping that, that was cool. Alright, I'm gonna add sound effects now. I decided I had enough time to add sound effects, so I opened up Audacity and looked around my computer for any sound effects I could use. I ended up finding a few that were pretty much perfect for what I was doing. Go in here? Yes, go in here. Uh, I'm pretty sure we can, nice. Everything updates, it runs perfectly. This is so cool. I know the sound effects are pretty awful, but it's all I had on my computer at the time, and since I didn't have access to the internet, I couldn't use anything else. Let's see how it runs on desktop, like as an actual application. In Unity, you can export your game to an EXE file, so that's what I spent the last 10 minutes of my time doing. And here I'm just testing my game in the last 5 minutes of my time. Um, my timer is done for 3 hours. That was 3 hours, that's a game I made in just 3 hours. I can finally turn my Wi-Fi back on. There we go, alright. Cool, uh, well yeah, that's it, that's my game, done. So that was it, I managed to finish the game well within my time limit and without any help from the internet. Anyway, if you're hearing this, you've watched the end of the video, so you must have enjoyed it. I'd really appreciate if you subscribed since this is my first video and I plan on uploading frequently to this channel. The support would mean a lot. Anyway, that's the end of the video, bye.